Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well and is geared up for another morning of improvisation. We have a lot to talk about this morning, and I will want to make sure that you guys have your instruments handy because there's going to be quite a few things that you're going to be playing through, some dictated exercises, and you'll want to make sure that you are not just playing along, but you're also singing along. Remember, participation is very important, so you need to have your videos on. Your teachers are going to be making sure that you are continuing to work along with everybody else. Teachers, a general note, if you want to pause the video at any time to take a little bit of extra workroom around a particular exercise, feel free to do so. I may suggest moments in the video where you can pause and then start um, from there. Before we do get started, I am looking forward to seeing you guys in person next week. And during that, I am hoping that we will have some volunteers who can work in the large section to demonstrate how they're doing with some of these exercises. So be sure to do some practicing as you go. So as you can see from the slide, we are going to be doing an arpeggio exercise that we will end up adding non-chord tones to. And the main reason for this is because a lot of times when people are improvising, they don't have an understanding of the chord progression that they're improvising over. They just throw random notes that they hear and hope some of them stick. We really want to practice mindfulness of the notes of the chord and make sure that the notes that we add to embellish fit into those same categories of non-chord tones that we talked about last semester. So let's take a look at what we're starting with. And this is going to be a general recap. Moving myself out of the way. So this is where we left off last time, dealing with the one, six, four, five progression. So hopefully you guys are practicing that. Um, we are going to use this progression as the foundation for our arpeggio exercise. And like the slide says, pay particular attention to the voice leading of the upper voices. Because that's going to be our springboard for, for the exercise. And what I mean by this is, if we look at this first chord here, we have do, mi, sol, do, which is just your standard broken up arpeggio. So I'm actually going to take the bass voice and I'm going to follow the same voice leading as voice one. So it's going to end up being in octaves. So the sixth chord would actually be do, mi, la, do. So only one note's changing. And then the four chord do, fa, la, do. So again, one note changing. And then after that, I'm going to shift everything down. T, re, sol, T. And that'll bring us back to. So you can end up putting this on a repeat to practice this multiple times. To take a look at this with notation, just to make sure we feel really, really comfortable with it. This is what it's going to end up looking like. So we have do, mi, sol, do, do, mi, la, do for the sixth chord, do, fa, la, do, then t, re, sol, t. So I am actually going to play through this chord progression and I'm going to sing on top and then I'll play the accompaniment again and you guys will be able to see sing along. But go ahead and make an attempt while I'm doing a quick demonstration. So, we'll take it at about a one, two, three, four, at about that pace, quarter note pace. One, two, three, ready, and. And 
then you can repeat that as you go. So this time around, I am just going to play the Alberti bass pattern underneath, and I want you guys to practice singing it without my help. I'll give you a count off. Go ahead and warm up in the key. Do, mi, sol, la, fa, re, ti, do. And I'll give you a, I will give you a count off. And this will be the quarter note pace. One, two, ready, and. Go ahead and try it again. resolve it if you feel so inclined. Teachers, you may want to go ahead and pause the video and just do a general check-in with your students scale of one to five. How did you guys feel just running through that exercise, singing it with solfege and or working on it with your instrument? All right, so moving on. So we can take this and we can add non-chord tones to this pattern. So an example of this, we may want to add neighbor tones to each of these notes. Let's say um, upper neighbor tones. So instead of going do, mi, sol, do, maybe I could do something like do, re, do, mi, fa, mi, sol, la, so, do, re, do, do, re, do, mi, fa, mi, La ti la do re do do re do fa so fa la ti la do re do ti do ti re mi re so la so ti do ti. So I don't have that notated, but I want you guys to go ahead and try that right now. We'll slow it down ever so slightly. So here's the eighth note. Oh, sorry, the quarter note. One, two, ready, and. Do, re, do, mi, fa, mi, sol, la, sol, do, re, do. Do, re, do, mi, fa, mi, la, ti, la, do, re, do. Do, re, do, fa, so, fa, la, ti, la, do, re, do, ti, do, ti, re, mi, re, so, la, so, ti, do, ti, do. And one of the things you'll notice, that T, that tendency tone at the very end really, really wants to resolve, which is why you keep on seeing me do it. Ending on a five chord feels weird. So this is perfectly set up to just put it on a repeat. So once you feel comfortable with that, we can get to the point of the bread and butter where instead of thinking about neighbor tones, we think about appoggiaturas. So we're going to add appoggiaturas to these arpeggios. Yeah, say that five times fast. So you, if you're taking a look at the sheet music here, you'll see beats one and two are the appoggiaturas to the chord tones on beats three and four. Remember, appoggiaturas are accented. They occur on the beats of the chord changes and then resolve into the chord tone by step. So you're leaping to the non-chord tone, which is tricky, and then resolving it by step. So what this ends up sounding like is like this. Re, do, fa, mi, la, sol. Re, do, re, do, 
fa mi ti la re do re do sol la fa ti la re do do ti mi re la sol do ti do so teachers you may want to go ahead and pause and students take a look at this practice it a few times both on your instrument and singing it with solfege and see how well you do even if there's no accompaniment underneath all right so hopefully this gives you a chance to feel a bit more comfortable with this now this is tricky um you'll see in the slides i noticed there are some tricky leaps into some of these appoggiaturas like if i look at measure six five going into six i have that f to a b that's a tritone so that can be tricky to hear right at a first glance especially when you have the chord progression underneath but if that's something you can nail then it's going to be super impressive but it does take some practice so you will want to make sure that you put some of the work in now, this is with upper appoggiaturas. Let's say I wanted to practice with lower appoggiaturas. Well, if we remember, appoggiaturas have that contrary motion. You leap up, resolve down, or you leap down, resolve up. So for this, we're actually going to practice the arpeggio exercise descending. So we have do, sol, mi, do. I am noticing that the solfege is marked wrong on the slides, so you may want to ignore that a bit. I will make sure when I upload these slides to Blackboard that they are corrected so that you can um, feel comfortable with um, knowing exactly that everything is referenced properly. I apologize for the typo. So it's not do, mi, sol, do, it's do, sol, mi, do. Then do, la, mi, do. Do, la, fa, do. Ti, sol, re, ti. So um, you may want to practice that a, a little bit on your own time, but then what we can do is we can add the appoggiaturas to this, and taking a glance, it looks like the solfege is correct on this slide, so you can depend on it. So with this exercise, we're going to have the upper, uh, sorry, the lower appoggiaturas resolving upwards into the chord tone. Ti, do, fa, sol, re, mi, ti, do. Ti do sol la re mi ti do ti do sol la mi fa ti do la ti fa sol do re la ti do. So, when you're practicing this one. Um, another thing that you may want to experiment around with once you feel really comfortable with this, see what happens if you try some chromatic appoggiaturas. Um, like with that A minor chord, um, if we think in the key of A minor, sol la isn't our only option. We also have C la. So, T do C la. And you could do that with any of these notes. It works really effectively for lower appoggiaturas, not so much for upper. So um, that's something to keep in mind if you're wanting that little extra challenge and you're feeling a little bit ambitious. So you'll be working on this in your small section with your teachers over the course of the next few weeks, and this is something that will show up on your midterm. So keep this in mind when we're looking at our homework. We are going to start off with just making sure that you can practice this on your instrument, adding neighbor tones or appoggiaturas. In every key up to two sharps or flats, um, we'll be adding more keys onto that a little bit down the road. But let's just keep it at two sharps or flats for now so we don't feel a bit overwhelmed getting transitioned back to in-person learning.
So be sure to practice these ascending and descending. And as always with these exercises, practice singing the exercise using solfege and singers, vocalists also practice doing these using letter names or practice them on the keyboard. And last but not least, because this is the end goal of this, making sure that we have mindfulness with non-core tone exercises, practice improvising over the 1645 chord progression, mindfully adding appoggiaturs to your melodies, particularly on the downbeats of the chord changes. One challenge I will give you is try to set it up so that you play nothing but chord tones except for the downbeat of every chord change. Again, I'll say, your challenge, try improvising using only chord tones over these progressions, except adding an appoggiatura to the downbeat of every chord change. It's going to take some thought, but the more that you feel comfortable with this exercise, the more this is going to help not just your improvisation ability, but it's going to end up applying to your solfege and aural skills when it comes to hearing as well. So with these things in mind, I am looking forward to seeing you all in person. And um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun working over these over the next few weeks, as well as adding some other things to this exercise and just improvising in general. So until I get to see you in person, stay healthy, stay careful, happy practicing, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Take care.